This morning I discussed the alchemy of wood and whether or not it would be possible to sew weaker bow woods in a brine or a solution that would potentially crystallize or maybe tip the balance in compressional strength. Kind of a thought experiment. This next one, number two in a series of two, deals with the issues that the Stone Age bow makers would have as far as sinew backing and producing glue. I, I wrapped the tips, well let's, let's start. I didn't do it with this bow, I mean it's soaked before and it wasn't necessary because it's white cedar, <clears throat> but I proposed soaking wood, soaking your staves in order to make them softer and easier to work with, with stone tools which that extra moisture in the wood disappears really quickly because of the drying curve. That simplifies the production of the wooden part. The second part, on this bow, it was sinew back using a different method. I didn't dip my little bundles of uh, prepared sinew into the hide glue pot, which, here's my hide glue pot, the plastic container with hide glue in it, gel at room temperature. I didn't dip these dried bundles, carefully prepared, into a hot mixture that was ultimately on my hot plate, plugged in to the power grid, laid them on here. I had wet, soupy, could have been fresh sinew strips, just kind of soaking in a very weak, gluey mixture, and I laid it on here. By all observations, I would have to say that it was a very successful way to do it. Just basically like raw strips of sinew, they don't have to be prepared that much. Um, just soaking in a gluey mixture and then just laid on the top after it was sized by just taking high glue, letting it like uh, get warm and get, pardon me for saying this, spitty and painting it on the back to size it. Low, low technology there, simple technology. I, I am now in the process because the back has shrunk down, wrapping the tips. I was going to show you this, honestly. I was going to show you this, but you know, if, if you're not doing it, it might not be fun to watch. You're just going to have to like follow the process where I took strips of sinew, like small bundle, chewed it up to soften it. Then I took, this is not necessary, it's just what I use, butter knife, my gel hide glue, put a glob in my mouth, and chewed this to make it all sticky and gluey and ready to do it and then I wrapped it. That's it and I'm not going to go into it but like you know that gluey mixture went around the tips. And I, I promise when you buy one of my sinew back bows I don't do it this way. I don't want to like gross people out. My personal bow I can totally picture some person sitting you know in their camp just getting some hide glue in her mouth, chewing sinew, and applying it that way. No heat needed, no pan needed, no high technology needed. This probably was the way a lot of people would wrap tips. Now, I have proven to myself that just soaking even raw, wet sinew, you can, you can strip it from wet tendons, just soaking in a weak, gluey mixture, is enough. This stuff is, is stuck down. It's not peeling up. It's hard. It's uh, forming crevasses, you know, more than if I did it another method, but it seems to really be working well. The tip wrap, a little bit of glue in there, kind of mixing it around with your saliva lets it be proper. Chewing up the sinew and wrapping it. And I don't propose that you do this because you risk bacteria and diseases. Um, I think I already have whatever I'm going to have at this point after 30 years of doing this stuff, so I'm good. The next question is, that thin gluey mixture, how do they make glue? I can run into the kitchen when my wife is not watching, get a pan, and simmer senior scraps, but I just had this light bulb went off. Primitive people, Stone Age people, how did they produce high glue? And we can say, well, they had their fires, and they created some kind of a, a, a bowl out of rock or whatever, and it was warm, they just simmered it. How about this? How about this? Grinding stuff between two rocks is 
flat rocks is well within the technology people. How would it work? I haven't tried it, but some of you are into experimenting in, in Stone Age technology. Share the video, you know, amongst your Stone Age friends. How would it be to really dry the heck out of these signs? Stick them in the sun. Just let them just dry to an extreme degree. Put them between a flat rock and grind them. I don't know if it's possible. I'm sure it is. You can grind anything between two flat abrasive rocks. But grinding your sinew, your dried sinew, stripping it as fine as possible, even beyond useful, like wrapping, grind it into a powder, put it in water, and just let it sit there in the sun in whatever container, a birch bark macuck or a stone bowl or a anything, maybe add a little bit of heat, but I bet you, dimes to dollars, you youngsters probably have never heard that expression, that your sinew powder will turn into glue a lot easier with a lot less heat than if you were to just boil sinew scraps or simmer sinew scraps. That might be the secret. Then you will have a very watery sinew gluey mixture because you have to let it evaporate down, you know, to get to whatever state you want. But if you were to take your container and just let it be subjected to the wind and the weather, in the sunlight, you will get a gelled substance like this from just ground up sinew dust. And then, from thence, you have the ability to take your Stone Age butter knife from the butter you use from mastodons and mammoths, mammoth butter, and um, put a glob in your mouth chew up your sinew and then back your bows that way a long slow process but a sure process and it wouldn't be any different than me using these sinew soaking in just a thin glue mixture until they're just sticky and so I'm proposing that I'm proposing that people use their mouths for better purposes than they use now that's my political statement and also that it's possible I'm going to try it. I'm going to find a couple flat rocks to see if I can't grind this stuff into sinew powder and make glue sans heat or with minor heat. Interesting. Stone Age technology. Again, I've never said it in any of my videos, but this last one, this one, along with the last one on soaking wood in the brine, lesser bow woods, these I think are truly worthy of passing around to those of you who experiment with stuff. That's it for today. I might not do a video for a while now. I've bombarded you enough. I appreciate your viewership and think about all this stuff. How do you do stuff without modern conveniences and tools? They did it. All we have to do is not be trapped in these thoughts of how people do it now, but think of other ways to do it. Excellent. It's really turning out to be a fun bow. Bowmaker John, signing off.